Hello, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Heather and here at Heather's Book Review, I tend to read and review thrillers, mysteries, whodunits, all that good stuff. Um, you can connect with me on Goodreads and Instagram. It's the same handle, just at Heather's Book Review. Um, today I am reading or I am reviewing a book that was in my 10 plus thriller TBR video. I'll link that up here. Um, but basically it was a big haul of thrillers that I got um, around October. And this is called The Cottage, which is written by Lisa Stone. This is a book on NetGalley um, that I personally requested because I thought it sounded really good. Um, so a couple of you um, mentioned in that video that you would like a review for this. Um, typically I only review books on NetGalley that I enjoyed. The Cottage is not one of them, <laughs> but I will always review a book if you guys request it. So um, here we go. So um, I'm going to be referencing my notes a lot here. So have you guys ever read a book that has a ton of potential, like a creepy setting, mysterious events encircling our one lone protagonist who's out experiencing them all by themselves? Wondering if they're indeed crazy or if the unexplainable events are actually occurring. Let's be honest, that's kind of the setup for a lot of thrillers, right? Um, that's exactly how The Cottage is set up, which I'm not mad at. I like books. Like, like I like to know, like, are you really crazy or is stuff like actually going on? Um, as the reader, you're following our main character, Jan's experience. Um, she's staying at a remote cottage that is old fashioned. Okay. So old fashioned that she has to put coins into a meter, um, to keep the house warm. I'm like, what the heck? Um, so flash forward to the owner of this cottage, Camille, um, saying that our main character, Jan can stay at the cottage, but she needs to watch over Camille's little terrier tinder so she's like yeah yeah go ahead and stay here but like by the way i'm leaving my dog so as jan and tinder start to get cozy at night by the fire jan with her glass of wine and tinder with his scratchies um he often leaps up off the couch um because he's like hearing strange noises outside um was that a pair of eyes that jan possibly saw looking at her in the window or was it purely her imagination did Tinder really run away at night and come back with cooked meat on the fur of his mouth? Um, or was that just like, did she think it was cooked meat and he really just got in like someone's garbage? Um, so while this sounds very promising, um, it starts to take a very strange and unrealistic turn. I mentioned this book in my November wrap up. Um, if you haven't watched that yet, I encourage you to watch it because I do have two four star thrillers in that video and one five star thriller. Um, I had a good reading month in the month of November um, in terms of like how the books actually turned out. Um, this, oh God, this just takes a really unrealistic turn. I had an inkling maybe 25% of the way into the book of the route it was taking. Um, and my exact thought was, really? This is the route we're going? That's all I'm gonna say for the non-spoiler section. Um, if you want a creepy thriller and you don't mind an unrealistic twist, then you might wanna check this one out. On my rating scale, I'm giving it a chore to finish. Um, once it was confirmed that I suspected the route this book was taking, um, I didn't want to finish it because I was like, this is so stupid. <laughs> um, I probably would have like DNF, do not finish, um, and just like written my review there. Um, but I know a couple of you got the book for yourselves and wanted me to film the review so we could chat about it. So of course I was going to finish it. Um, but dang, I didn't like it. And for those of you that bought it and read it, like l we have to chat in these comments. So I am going to go ahead and go into the spoiler section of the video for those of us who have read. Um, if you're new here, I categorize my channel into playlists via different genres. So I have a psychological thriller playlist, a just a general overarching thriller playlist, um, a whodunit mystery playlist. So I encourage you to check those out um, if you want to hear more of my reviews. But I need to get chatting for those of us who have read. Okay, here we go. 
Having the idea that the babies were never stillborns and Anne was taking them, of course I suspected her to be doing something wrong, right? Then when the clinic was mentioned and we had an idea that Ian, Ian and Emma were not the only couple that this happened to, I had the idea that it was the same sperm donor for um, the entire clinic and that the owner of the clinic was behind it, which was the case. Because I was like, this is weird. This is like incestual stuff going on. The fact that these babies are, you know, being born um, deformed and, and everything. So I know, I don't know if you guys read this far, but at the back of the book, it the author goes in to say that like, it basically felt like she was saying here, I wrote it here. I said, I know the author adds the bit at the end of the story that sadly this has indeed happened before a situation like this, but I feel like mentioning that is almost using it as a crutch to the reader. It's kind of like, oh, well, I guess I can't call this unrealistic because it's actually happened. But like, don't kid yourself. You can definitely call this unrealistic just because it happened before doesn't mean you aren't allowed to be like, well, that was a bit of a stretch. The writing wasn't anything phenomenal. It was very mediocre. There wasn't much character depth. Um, it was nice that the book didn't end with more incest with Chris and Jan. Um, and that's probably the only thing I enjoyed about it. So as always, thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you read this, please leave in the comments below. Did you not like it as much as I did? Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, you guys.